This is part four in our series on small house design and framing. In this section, we will be going over the foundation, the building foundation. So what we are usually going to start with will be some type of a two-dimensional drawing, and it will be from the overhead position as it would be with a floor plan. We're going to have measurements on it, and we're going to have comments, detail numbers, um, and footing sizes. Go ahead and zoom in here. Here is the porch patio, and it's going to have two footings here for each one of the posts. And here they're giving you a dimension of 18 by 18 by 16, and actually giving you the depth. 18 inches wide by 18 inches wide, 16 inch depth. And here are the measurements. They're providing with a few measurements to center. They want you to center this particular footing. In the garage, they might give you the garage door, the stem wall measurements. And here it looks like they're giving you 16 foot 2 inches. And uh, this will allow for an inch and a half on each side for the garage trim or the uh, door jam, I mean. Uh, eight inch stem walls. This is the garage, don't forget. Two by six wood framing. So that would require an eight inch stem wall. If it was two by four framing, it might be a six inch stem wall. Again, there are all your measurements. And, yeah, and you're always gonna need to double check. The measurements on the plans might not be exact. You know, you might have a measurement here and the computer spit this out and you go to measure it to get the 16 foot two, this is gonna to have to be two foot. And you go, wait a minute, I'm missing an inch and three quarters. You go back and do some math, you might be able to find it. But uh, again, I can't tell you how many times I've came to a situation where these numbers aren't always going to be perfectly perfect. Uh, the dotted lines usually are going to represent the inside of the footing. You can see here that we have a footing here. I guess you wouldn't know that, but now I'm telling you. These would represent the footings. And we have something down here. It says a six inch slab height. They're calling for a six inch tall slab, concrete slab. And all footings will be 16 inches by 16 inches. Make sure that you don't mess this up. The six inch slab height will go above the 16 inch by 16 inch square footings. So you're actually going to have a depth here of 22 inches from the top of the concrete slab to the bottom of the footing. This was actually something I had a problem with when I first started thinking, oh, wait a minute, the slab height's gonna be this and the footings will be this. And um, all I need to do is dig down 10 inches. Not exactly true there. So these are kind of separate measurements. And don't forget, we are also going to end up with details, uh, markers on the foundation plan. Here we have D2 over 1. So this is going to be page D2 that we're going to be looking for. And uh, we can see here that this is going to be kind of a cross section, the line going across it, give us an idea what we're looking at. Here's the page 1. D2 is going to be down here. Uh, it's going to usually going to be in the lower right-hand corner of the plans. And I already discussed that in the previous video. Don't need to go into much of it uh, depth on this one. Um, we do have another detail that I added on here, D5. Let's go ahead and look at number one, two by six construction standard, pressure treated. Number four, rebar, two of them, three inches minimum from the soil and then a um, 450 PSI concrete mix. The detail number five is showing the anchor bolts and the spacing. Five eighths anchor bolts, six foot on center. You're usually gonna have a minimum embedment somewhere on these. Um, seven inches, nine inches, something like that. And it's not uncommon also, I didn't draw it in here. It's not uncommon to actually have the anchor bolts and they show the rebar tied around the bottom here of the anchor bolt instead of being in the center of the uh, footing and I'll leave that up to you. Maybe you want to throw another piece of uh, rebar in there, tie it to the anchor bolts or center the rebar in the footing. So it's not uncommon to have that. You'll have a two by four wall. 
the anchor bolts and they were supposed to be three inches away from the uh, edge of the footing to, or where it's going to touch the dirt and that's not going to work on a three and a half inch wall where this thing's only going to be an inch away from the exterior so again this is the uh, these are the fun parts of construction I can share with you but uh, might actually be a problem a serious problem that could lead to uh, uh, some big money in uh, repairs or modifications so it wouldn't be a bad idea to read all of the information on the plans general notes project specifications um, look at the plans and then look for problems that you're going to run into and I was actually uh, I did that for quite some time on some of these big projects they would uh, pay me to go through the plans and I would look for all the uh, deviations or mistakes I should say you have an architect drawing the plans and then you have an engineer doing modifications and uh, a cabinet guy coming in drawing some stuff and that doesn't always work plumbing electrical heating and ventilation structural engineering concrete um, I don't know if they fixed it all with computers today but a long time ago this used to be a big problem let's go ahead and take a look at what the floor slab should look like we have the main slab the garage slab and the patio slab usually the patio and the garage slabs will be poured separately take a look at the bottom here are the footings back to the garage slab let's go ahead and remove it again this is what it would look like when you originally pour it most of the time you might have some rebar sticking out of the footings to um, help tie everything together when they pour the garage slab patio slab with the post footings rebar and these I, I believe are two foot on center and then this is this is common for the bottom of a post footing for uh, the porch remove the rest of the concrete and here's what we have rebar sticking out tied all over the place let's kind of whip around the building here this is the garage member this one's going to stop it's not going to go across otherwise it would be into the sticking out where everybody could trip over it and there's the other corner now let's take a look at the anchor bolts the anchor bolts usually have to be less than 12 inches from each corner and this could actually create a problem when you start getting large sections of material uh, maybe let's just say you had a 4x8 post here and then uh, maybe double trimmers or the 4x8 was a post um, this could actually create a problem for the placement of the anchor bolt to where it's not in the way of the framing. So here we can see one piece and then the anchor bolts here. Take the other corner again, less than 12 inches away from the edge of the corner, not uncommon. Six foot on center, that, that is a maximum distance. You can place these anchor bolts closer together they just don't want them to be farther apart than six feet on center go to the other end same thing anchor bolt there anchor bolt here again less than six feet and if we just go we know this is 16 inches on center 16 32 48 this thing's about 52 inches away um, less than five feet and that is also a good idea if you're going to lay out a wall I like to equally space these um, anchor bolts if I can so why put if I have a 10 foot wall why put one at the edge one at six feet and the next one at four feet why not just have one at each corner and then one in the middle somewhere around five feet if it, if it works out to where it's not going to hit the studs Here's what it would look like, the anchor bolts without the footing. They just kind of roll in. And again, this is what I was talking about. A lot of times they'll have a piece of rebar that fits into this corner, the inside corner of the bend on the anchor bolts. They like to have that to provide some extra strength. Actually, something I like to do also. Again, there's the anchor bolt and the footing. That's it for this video. Hope it works.